Alright, all TV. I want to talk to you guys uh, for a few minutes about the whole LeBron situation. Now, let me first disclose that I'm no longer really a fan of the NBA per se, and I don't follow the game as closely as I used to. There's different reasons for that, mostly the corruption. I feel like a lot of games are fixed. But, I do know the history, and I do still know enough about the NBA to know what I'm talking about. Um, let me first say that LeBron James is one of the top five, if not the most overall physically talented players of all time. I will say that. But what he did, in my mind, is inexcusable. I understand where he's coming from in a way to um, go to Miami. I know him and D. Wade are best of friends, and I know that's going to be really exciting to watch. You have two of the top three perimeter players in the league, the other being Kobe, on the same team, which is going to be exciting to watch, because both of them have, both of them are very gifted offensively, but they're both unselfish players in a, in a way, and I feel that that whole um, chemistry with them and Boss, the whole big three, I feel that they will have a lot of success, and they probably will win the ring that LeBron wants so much. What LeBron did is inexcusable in that he's playing with the competition. That's the least important aspect. That he went and cut and ran and is playing with the competition. Something Michael and Magic and Bird, Isaiah Thomas, greats like that, they would have never done that shit in their prime. Never. Maybe in their in their older days, Charles Barkley did it. When he was older, he played with uh, Elijah Wan and Clyde Drexler in his older days to try to win the ring. But not in his mid-twenties. He demanded to be the man in his mid-twenties. And he said as much. LeBron's not demanded to be a man. To be the man. He's uh, essentially piggybacking off of D-Wade. It's D-Wade's team. I mean, D-Wade has already won the championship with Miami in 2004. So, there's really... 2006, I'm sorry. 2006. Um... There's no pressure on D-Wade. All the pressure is on LeBron, and to just stab the city of Cleveland like that in the back, the city that idolized you and made you an icon, and you were the, the face of not only the NBA, but of, of Cleveland. You were the most popular person in Cleveland. You were a god there. They stuck by you year after year after you consistently failed. To just stab them in the back like that is just a deplorable, inexcusable thing. Also, furthermore, what's more important is the message LeBron sends to the youth with this decision. Now, like it or not, athletes are role models, especially to the youth. Everybody aspires to be an athlete. They look up to these athletes, all celebrities, but athletes in general, or athletes in uh, particular. The message LeBron is sending to younger to the adolescents with this decision is that it's okay to stab people in the back to achieve success. You don't have to go through that adversity. You go through that adversity, it's okay to stab the people who got you there in the back to achieve success. And that's just not good. And he's teaching these kids to be individualistic the man called an hour press conference on primetime television to announce, to stab, to essentially rip out the heart of his city and step on An hour press conference on primetime, like he's fucking Obama or something. You're just an athlete. You're not that special. The message he's sending to the youth with that decision is negative. And his legacy, whether or not he wins a ring with Miami, he better fucking win that ring now. He's got, he's got, shit. Almost the starting five of the fucking dream team with him. He better win the ring now. But even if he does, his legacy will forever be tarnished in a way because he betrayed the city that got him there. I mean, you would have never seen uh, Magic betray the Lakers or 
Bird betrayed the Celtics, and Michael betrayed the Bulls, Isaiah Thomas betrayed the, uh, the Pistons. Even John Stockton and Carl Malone, they never won a championship. Did they betray the Jazz? No. What LeBron did is cut and run. Ripped the heart out of his city. And it's cool. It's perceived as cool. Um, one of the biggest bitch moves in sports history out there. Personally. I don't care who gives me flack for this video, I'm just saying, speaking my opinion. What LeBron did was almost cowardly, almost cowardly, I guess. Um, he should have just stuck with it, man, he should have rolled it out. He would have, he would have eventually won in Cleveland, I have no doubt about that, he would have eventually won in Cleveland, but instead he just took the easy way out, and that's what the message she's sending to the youth, that it's okay to take the easy way out to achieve success, you don't have to go through hardships, so stick with what got you there, it's okay to shortcut your way to success, and it's okay, the message that he's sending to the NBA, and to the stars in the NBA is it's okay to play with the competition, there's no more, there's no such thing as robbery can't beat him, join him. That's what he, that's that's what he's saying. That's the message he's saying. Man calls himself the chosen one. Calls himself King James. Calls press conferences in prime time. The bullshit for 45 minutes and announcing the last 10, 15 minutes or so that he's joining the Heat. Something he already knew the whole time along. He was just stringing the Knicks and the Bulls along. The arrogance of that man to betray an entire city like that on national television and go play for another man's team play second fiddle D Wade hold on just a bitch move man just a bitch move I'm disappointed in you LeBron man oh, I just had the ball set 